Take a close look at their faces. They're someone's sister, mother, friend. Some have been raped, others beaten. Dozens of women who were all strangled or asphyxiated. Their cases remain unsolved. Now, as CBS2 investigator Pam Zekman reports, a serial killer may be on the loose in Chicago. It's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. Their bodies were found in vacant lots, abandoned buildings and alleys, some dumped in garbage cans and some even set on fire. It could be anybody's sister, it could be anybody's daughter, it could happen to anybody, not just to my family. Audrey Blenstrup's beloved oldest sister, Gwendolyn Williams, was one of the victims. She kept us out of the streets and she kept the streets away from us. She was our protector. But she was the one who needed protection in 2002. Williams' body was found half-dressed, covered in blood, with drugs and alcohol in her system, along with semen from recent sexual activity. There was also skin under her nails. She was fighting for her life. That's the first thing we all thought to ourselves. She was not going to go down without a fight. For years, her sisters have been fighting for police to catch her killer. We loved her very much. We asked the Murder Accountability Project to review more than 50 unsolved strangulation and asphyxiation cases we found dating back to 2001. The group has a knack for finding patterns in unsolved murder cases using a computer algorithm. For many years, our algorithm has been signaling red alert about a series of strangulations in Chicago. Hargrove showed us how he plotted the more than 50 unsolved cases. Those are the three uh, killing fields, uh, South Side, Far South Side, and Chicago's West Side. Disproportionately, these victims are women who have had a history of sex work and who have had a history of illegal drug use. The cases drop off in 2014, suggesting to Hargrove the killer may have gone to jail temporarily. The pattern started again in 2017 and have continued with a vengeance into 2018. Over those two years, Diamond Turner, Catherine Satterfield Buchanan, Valerie Marie Jackson, Laura Dawn Harbin, and Nicole Linnell Ridge were killed. Ridge still memorialized near the abandoned garage where she was murdered. All strangled, all declared homicides by the medical examiner. But Rio Renee Holyfield's death last September is in limbo. Streets and sand workers found her in a garbage container. Her body was dumped in a garbage can. She's not trash, she's loved by many. Circumstances suggest the death could have been a homicide by asphyxiation, the autopsy report says, but her body was too decomposed to definitely tell. Her cause of death undetermined, so the police classified it as a suspended death investigation. Does that add to the pain, not knowing what happened? I feel like razor blades. It hurt even worse. It is highly unlikely that these 50 women were murdered by 50 separate men. His warning to Gary, Indiana police proved accurate in 2014. After Darren Dion Van was charged with strangling a 19-year-old prostitute in Hammond, he confessed to murdering six other women in Gary, a pattern Hargrove pointed out to Gary police in 2010. We think it's extremely likely that there are common killer or killers in the Chicago series, as it was proven to be in Gary, Indiana. But the Chicago Police Department says that at this time, it has no actionable evidence of a pattern that would point to a serial killer. Recently, Gwendolyn Williams' sisters were told Chicago police thought they found her killer. DNA evidence matched a suspect. That suspect was convicted in Detroit in 1980 for armed robbery and again in 2014 for check fraud. I was relieved that finally we knew who it was. In September, the suspect was arrested in Tampa on a warrant for first-degree murder in Williams's case. The sisters were told that in an interview with Chicago police, that suspect denied killing Williams or even being in Chicago. 
new DNA test did confirm he was with her, but the Cook County State's Attorney's Office decided not to extradite him. I just hope and pray that something would be done to get him off the streets. Hargrove hopes his research will help police find whoever may be involved in these cases. Meanwhile, sex workers that women who uh, habitually use illegal drugs should think that there is a target on them because there is. The Chicago Police Department refused to do an on-camera interview. It does say that detectives continue to investigate all open cases, including pursuing new leads and monitoring DNA profiles. The CBS2 investigators are not giving up. We will be following up with law enforcement on this issue. Robin Erica. So if there was a DNA match, why didn't the state's attorney extradite this man? As we understand it, they wanted more evidence that he actually killed her. There was evidence that they had sexual activity together, but they're looking for more evidence. The case is still under investigation. So they may do something, they just can't or won't do it right now with the DNA evidence? Correct. Okay, thanks, Pam.